in the speech of Dag Eirik, <clears throat> Dag Eirik is mentioned that what brings us together is time. And that's true. But I will add something more. It's also an understanding of <clears throat> the art history. I think that Dag Eirik and I has a very, is very engaged in modern art history uh, and in art history as such. We don't see our work disconnected from the modern tradition and from the avant-garde tradition. I think it's all the way around. I think both of us see our activity as an artist as a kind of unfolding and enfolding the modern tradition. And I think that maybe we will also emphasize that what we call the modernism and the avant-garde tradition from the Romantic times and up till today is not at all in contradiction to the present contemporary art scene. It is, so to speak, there is an organical element between those two things. For my own, uh, in my own case, um, a way to understand what I am doing is to understand how important minimal art has been for me. For me, there is a time before and after the American minimal contribution to the contemporary art scene. Um, I think that was a turning, new turn point in modern sculpture history. Um, and, for, um, and I think that um, one of the challenges in my life has been to reflect what do we do after minimal art? How do we take the next step? And one of the ways to sort of speak, bring the next step into minimal art was to go deep into the Baroque history, history of Baroque art. What minimal and Baroque has in common is, is something which is a little bit deeper than the style. It's the question of seriality. Uh, because in the Baroque we see a series of events take place in churches and in the sculptures. So we have, so to speak, a structure in the Baroque who deal with seriality and variation as we see it in the minimal art in the 60s, although they have they come to seriality and variation from very different position. You can say that in the Baroque art and in the minimal art, there is an element of self-referentiality. One element in the work, so to speak, referred to the another element, etc., etc. But when you as a young artist ask yourself, how can I, so to speak, stand on the shoulder of minimal and take the next step. Then we have to be aware of that in the classical minimal with Donald Jott and Robert Smithson and Carl Andre and many, many others, there is a structure which, so to speak, controls the, the event of seriality. And, but what the Baroque, so to speak, brings into the interpretation of minimal is a dynamic, dynamic element, which means that when if you want to continue the minimal tradition, you have to go from a structural understanding to an understanding of the structure as a dynam dynamic event. And, um, and when you start to work with dynamic systems, as I do, then you jump into avant-garde science in biology, in physics, in cybernetic, in um, in computer uh, theory, etc., etc., and not at least, you you jump very quickly into uh, electromagnetism, you, um, and you jump into theory about space-time in physics and and regarding the universe. And here you you realize that the, that the dynamic is connected with a morphogenesis, the fact that forms are in a constant development in our world, not only in the universe, but also in our biological world, and yeah, well, everywhere. And if you, if you look at the, my, my, my work, and this has inspired me, so to speak, to sort of bring the curves from the landscape into the curves in the object, into the, a kind of curvenality, into the diagram of the drawings. So, um, and, it, and if you, look at my exhibition, maybe you will see not in a superficial way like through a similarity, but through the forces who work with, who sort of, be, sort of be construct my, my, my works. There is a transformation from the landscape 
into the object and further to the diagram. And that can also be seen as a new kind of interpretation of seriality. Another element which is very, very important here is the concept of form. Form has, so to speak, since the 60s, since the 60s, sorry, been a kind of taboo in modern art. But for me, form is very, very important when it comes to art. Form is something we discover in musical compositions, is something we can discover in modern dance. We have forms in architecture. The world is full of forms and form is emerging everywhere and all the time in the biological and in the physical world, in almost every scale. But for me, form is, um, so to speak, a diagram which can, so to speak, open up for what we could call the invisible forces in the world, the invisibility of sculpture, so to speak. Uh, because, uh, and if we, if we go to the French mathematician René Thun, he will say that when we meet a significant form, we have access to the dynamic forces which have created the space or the circumstances for this form. So in a way, uh, uh, you can say that form in this understand, understood as a dynamic force, not as a static force, so to speak, is the thing which activate the minimal structure in the old tradition and bring the work into a kind of constant transformation. And it is this constant transformation through form which interests me and which I will call the morphogenesis of my work. When a form is beautiful in music, in poetry, well, even in philosophy and science, then something occur in the world, something are emerging in the world, maybe something that we haven't seen before, but so, and sometimes something that we know already, but not have seen in the same way as we can see it now through the artwork. And that is what interests me as an artist. It is to create forms and events through the artwork so that we have access to the invisible forces, to deeper forces, Maybe some forces which maybe are not yet here, but will come from somewhere one day. Maybe a form is a kind of diagram which makes it possible to, so to speak, discover something which is incomprehensible in the future, but through the form of an artwork, you certainly have a body in which this event or this which occur in the future can find a dialogue with. Well, my works is also very, this summer I was listening to Björk, because I think Björk is a great composer. And, and what I discovered with, through her music, which I studied so intensively this summer, was this hybrid space between an electronic dimension, an organic dimension, and an analog dimension. And when you see this exhibition, think about Björk, because I, so to speak, have been very inspired by the way that she can create hybrid phenomena, hybrid intensities. And I'm very interested in the relation between technology, biolo biology, and then formal aspect of the art. And I, maybe you will see that interest, that's interest when you uh, go into the spaces.